Hello everyone, I am back, ready to make some new videos. A lot has happened since the last video came out. I in fact graduated from Texas A&M. I ended up getting a new job, I moved to a new city, and in fact I even got engaged recently. What I'm going to cover in this set of videos is a new paper titled Algorithm for Explicit Solution to the Three-Parameter Linear Change Point Regression Model. This will be similar to the other series that I've done in which I attempt to make the paper reach a wider audience by breaking down in detail what's happening in a far less formal manner than what is typically required for submitting a journal article. All I assume is that you have a basic understanding of some calculus and regression modeling. So let's dive into the backstory of this problem. So let's first start out by drawing a simple graph of energy use versus average outdoor air temperature. This is normally called a building energy signature plot. I'm going to assume that this energy use is primarily for cooling, and I'll draw 12 points for the 12 months of the year. We normally put our independent variable or our driving variable outdoor air temperature on the x-axis, and we put the resulting energy use on the y-axis. What we'll oftentimes see in a plot such as this is a hockey stick shape in which a portion of the outdoor temperatures you see have a horizontal line or constant energy use, and for the other temperatures you get a linear sloping relationship. All a linear change point model really is is a couple of straight lines that we stick together and we try to fit to the data. So what is the change point? The change point is what you see right here. It's where we take these two independent linear segments and we make sure they come together at a point. So at this point, I think you have a decent visual understanding of what's going on here, but we need some mathematics to describe what this line is, or how do you get this line mathematically from an input temperature. So I'm going to use the nomenclature I used in the paper. So I'm going to use some coefficients using the Greek letter beta. And we have energy use is related to a constant term, beta naught, a slope term, beta 1, and a change point term, beta 2. And I'll draw those on the chart here for you. To give you a more concrete sense of what these things are, I'll give you some units that you would actually see if you use this model in industry. So our energy use will be a unit of energy, so let's say kilowatt hour. A temperature, United States, we use degrees Fahrenheit, unfortunately. Sorry, rest of the world. Beta naught, our constant term, will have to be in the same units as our energy. Beta one will be a slope term, so this is kilowatt hour per degree F. And beta two is our change point, so that's in units of temperature. Anytime you see these additions or subtractions, you need to have the same units. Let me go ahead and explain that funny plus in the superscript syntax. So we have the parentheses, we have something inside it, which I'll denote by this red squiggly line. And if that stuff inside the parentheses is less than zero, all you get out is zero. So basically, if you have a negative input to this, you get zero out. If that red stuff inside the parentheses is greater than zero, zero or positive, you simply get back out what's in the parentheses. So whatever that red stuff was. You may also see this described as something called the ramp function. So at this point, let's, let's dive into what is this algorithm trying to process? What input data is going in and what is coming out? So for us, in this case, our input data is an array or multiple temperature energy input pairs, or in the abstract sense, simply XY pairs, pairs of numbers. And you could have 
an average monthly temperature of 10 degrees Fahrenheit and have 20 kilowatt hour of energy use going out. These are just sample numbers. Don't try to take them too literally. You have 15, 25, 100, 105. These are just X, Y pairs. And what this algorithm does is it takes those and we're going to process them and we are going to get out the coefficients, the beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, that best model that data in the hockey stick shape that we showed before. What I'd like to do at this point is take a step back and let's go back to a simpler case, one you might have learned about in high school, that is simple linear regression. So given this plot of XY pairs, data points, you can fit a line through them that best represents that data because the data obviously normally that you get doesn't fall on a straight line. So we have x, y data pairs and the equation for a line is y equals mx plus b. If we use the nomenclature, the, the way we're writing it typically here, so we'll have a constant beta naught, a slope term beta 1, and we have still the y and the x. So what linear regression allows you to do is find the constant and the slope term. And what we're trying to do is make sure this line has small errors. So we want the difference between the data point and the line to be as small as possible. We're going to minimize that. And what is the actual error? So you can, for a point, you can write a formula for the error. So you have the y value for that point and you got to subtract out what the model was telling you so what the line is is beta naught plus beta one x of your input and so that is your that is your error now unfortunately error can be positive or it can be negative with this sense so a lot of times we want positive and negative errors to be looked at the same way counted the same just symmetric so a function that we use to make it positive always is we just square it. So that's the error for one point, but we have lots of points. We have money of them. So what we want to do is reduce the sum of the squared errors. And it's exactly what it, what it says. So we take each error, which we have here, we square it. And then we do that for all the different ones. So this first term you see has y1 and x1. That's for the first term or first data point, and then we do it for the second, the third, all the way up until the, the nth data point. And so you have a function, one function, the sum of squared errors, SSC. Uh, we know y1s and x1s and x2s and y2s. We have all of that, that information. So at this point, all that's unknown is basically given a beta naught and beta 1, you get out some level of errors. And we're going to try to minimize, we're going to find the, the beta naught and the beta 1 that give you an output of the lowest sum of squared errors. What is critical about this sum of squared errors equation is that it's smooth and it's continuous. And this is what really separates this problem from the problem I was solving in this paper. And the one we have up here, we have a model, these two lines, that is continuous, but it is not smooth. There is a change point, and it's not differentiable at that point. Because we're going to be using that equation in the upper right in our sum of squared errors equation, and it causes all sorts of problems. So I hope that whets your appetite, and you continue to find interest through the rest of this series. See you in the next video.